I trust all is well. Welcome back. We are going to we're going to start a new topic today. Or not even a new topic, but a theme. The theme is metropolitan movement. So for section A of the exam, you can do either indigenous people and Europeans, Caribbean economy and slavery, or you can do resistance and revolt. You have three themes that you can choose from for section A of the exam. For section B of the exam, we have two themes that we're going to look at. Metropolitan movements towards emancipation and adjustments to emancipation. And for section C, the United States in the Caribbean. So those are the themes that we are going to look at uh, for the exam. No. Sir, can I please repeat? Repeat. Sir, what are the topics that we're going to focus on for our exams? I didn't hear. Not this, not exam coming up for December. I'm talking about your CXE. Yes, sir. That's why I, I, I wasn't hearing a while ago. I never okay. hear what you say, sir. All right. So section A. So what we would have done is that so far we would have done everything for section A. Method. The first one, indigenous people and Europeans, Caribbean economy and slavery, resistance and revolt, section A. So we cover everything for section A, every single topic. It is now your responsibility to use the past papers and to try and answer the questions, right? Practice the questions because that is very important. For section B, we are starting section B today, which is metropolitan movement towards emancipation. Another theme under section B is adjustments to emancipation. And those are the only two themes we are doing in section B. For section C, we're going to look at United States in the Caribbean. So the best part about it is that we are finished with section A, all the topics in section A. Our next hurdle is to try and finish the topics for section B and C, all right? So for today's class. Yes, sir. We are going to look at, these are the objectives. By the end of the class, you are supposed to know what is metropolitan, emancipation, amelioration, apprenticeship, and abolitionist. We are going to discuss the abolition of the British slave trade, discuss the arguments used to abolish the slave trade, uh yeah so those are the three things that we're going to look at for this class the other two objectives we're going to look at those four and five for uh we're going to look at those two objectives on monday all right so what do we mean by the metropole or metropolitan so because that is the name of the theme. The theme is metropolitan movements. What do we mean by metropolitan? You hear the word metropolitan, what comes to mind? Somewhere, a country, an area. A country, an area. Very good. Anyone else? 
when you hear the word metropolitan, what comes to mind? Sir, a large city. A large city. Very good. Very good. All right. So you have an idea what we when we talk about metropolitan, what we're talking about. Now, metropolitan denotes the parent state of a colony. So Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, Grenada, St. Vincent, Guyana, Cuba, Asandama, Puerto Rico, all of these Caribbean territories, they were colonies. And their parent state, the one who was in charge of them, uh, were European countries. So European countries were in charge of them. So Europe, all of this space right here is what we consider to be the metropole, right? That is what we consider the metropole if you look at it. So all of here is what we consider the colonies and here is the metropole. So when we talk about metropolitan movements, we are talking about what were the different movements taking place in the metropole in Europe that is going to influence the emancipation of enslaved Africans in the Caribbean. All right? So if for Spanish colonies, the metropole uh, or the metropolitan country for the Spanish colonies would be Spain, the English would be Britain, for the French would be France. So that is what we are going to look at for this theme. It's a very interesting theme and we should know quite, you know, about the activities taking place in Europe that is going to influence the abolition of enslaved Africans in the Caribbean. Now, there are some important terms that we are going to use that is very important. Emancipation is one of them. Emancipation means the act of giving the enslaved African freedom. So every time you hear I use the word emancipation, I'm talking about the act of giving the enslaved Africans freedom. Amelioration. Amelioration, the word by itself means improvement, right? However, when we use the word amelioration for this theme, we are talking about improving the condition of the enslaved Africans. How the enslaved, the conditions were improved, if they were improved or if they were not improved. Then, we're going to look at another term for this theme. Very, it is going to come up quite often, apprenticeship. And when we use that word apprenticeship, apprenticeship is really, really means training. But when we use it for this theme, it is how the European, a system that the European is going to put in place to, to train the enslaved people in becoming free people, how to train them to be free people. So they are going to train them how to be free people. And also is that for any overtime, and they will work for a number of hours free. Well, really not free, but they would work for a number of hours. And then anytime that number, they supersede that number of hours, then they would get overtime pay. They should, it didn't happen. And then the next concept word that key term is abolitionist. And these are persons who assist the enslaved people in gaining their freedom, all right? So these are some terms that you need to remember. 
metropolitan emancipation, amelioration, apprenticeship, and abolitionist. Now, Blake, what do I mean by metropolitan? David Blake, what do I mean by metropolitan? A little, let us tell you from now, if I'm calling on you and if you don't mention that there's a problem that you have, I'm going to remove you from my class, all right? You must participate in my class. I don't need people to be in the class who is just there uh, to show that you are there. You must be part of it. David Blake, what do we mean by metropolitan? Is David Blake in the class? Sir, her mic is not working. Her mic is not working. All right. Kristen, what do we mean by metropolitan? Sir, the parent colony. The parent colony. Excellent. Haley Beckford. Yes, sir. When we talk about emancipation, what are we talking about? Sir, so speaking about giving the enslaved Africans their freedom. Very good. All right. Bud, Jillian, apprenticeship. When we use the term apprenticeship, what are we talking about? Uh, Jillian's mic's not working, but she can type oh. in the chat. Could you read it for me from the chat? Okay, sir, when she types it. All right, we'll wait. First, she said teaching the enslaved on how to be freed people and paying them for their services. Very good. All right. So these are some of the terms that we are going to use. And ladies, please be familiar with the term. Now, I'm going to give you a historical timeline on what we are going to look at for this theme. All right. So... The first thing we're going to look at is the abolition of the slave trade. The slave trade was abolished in the British colonies because remember we have British, French, and Spanish. In the British colonies, the slave trade was abolished in December 1807. Once the slave trade was abolished, they are going to the British is going to implement the Registry Act in 1815. Now, what was the Registry Act? Is that you had to register all your enslaved people. All right? So that is the Registry Act. Now, as the registry debate was taking place in the British colonies, by 1816, we had the Barbados Slave Revolt. What was another name for the Barbados Slave Revolt? Sir, the Busa Rebe Revolt or Rebellion. Very good. Excellent. And so by the time Barbados was having their revolt, by the time they finished with the Barbados Revolt, the next thing is that going to happen is that Britain is going to implement some proposal to improve the conditions of the enslaved people in 1823. This is called the amelioration proposal, 1823. Now the enslaved people in Demerara, who did Demerara the other day for the, for the presentation? Which yeah, group? I mean. Tell me what happened, how the amelioration proposal of 1823 influenced the the Demerara report. Sir, they gave them um, the new improved working hours. Um, yes. They removed whipping. 
yes thinking. um and less time on the field less time on the field very good but the you are very correct uh but the people the, the enslaved people in demara thought that the amelioration proposal meant what Um, it meant that what they believe it meant for them in the Barbados slave revolt let us go back to Barbados for the Barbados slave revolt what the enslaved people thought that the, the registry bill meant for them sir they thought that it was like um, the planters or the plantation owners in interfering in like their own rights. They thought that they were trying to thwart their progress to freedom. Very good. Excellent. Same thing with the amelioration proposal. They thought, the enslaved people in Demara thought that the amelioration proposal was their emancipation and they were, were withholding the, their emancipation from them. Now, after the amelioration proposal, ladies, what is going to take place is another one, the Jamaica Slave Revolt. What is on the other name for the Jamaica Slave Revolt? The Sam Sharp Rebellion or the Christmas Rebellion. Very good. And so immediately after Jamaica had their revolt, Britain is going to implement a period, the, the Emancipation Bill. This was the bill now to prepare the enslaved people to gain their freedom, the Emancipation Bill. Now, within this bill, they are going to say that before you get your freedom, we have to train you to be free people. So between 1834 and 1838, the enslaved people in the British colony went through a period of apprenticeship in which they are going to train them to be free people. Um, in 1838, slavery Sir, was abolished in the British colony. Sir, Go ahead. Um, so you think the, the whites did the apprenticeship period. Do you think they did it out of like kindness of the hearts or is like they, that was their final way of holding on to slavery? Do you think like... It was, it was their final... That's all because the apprenticeship, they still had to work for them. Yes. Yeah, because they still had to work for them and so they were still in bondage. They just weren't getting any beatings. So I feel like they were trying to hold on to that. So just in case they could kind of sway them back. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Dan, that is correct. Go ahead, Lawrence. Sir, can you go back over the Emancipation Bill, please? The Emancipation Bill, this was the bill that they prepared for them that say that you are going to be free people on August the 1st, 1838. So, so this was the time that they decided that they are going to free the enslaved people on August the 1st, 1838. So they say, before we free you, we are going to, you have to go through a period of apprenticeship. And so the period of apprenticeship was 1834 to 1838, where they said that they are going to train them to be free people. It's clear, Lawrence? Yes, sir. But as Barclay rightly stated, yes. it, was, it, it had nothing to do with training. It was a way in which they can, you know, you try and you know, like you have a bank of ketchup, you know it's going to finish, but you do everything to squeeze out the little bit that is left. Yes, sir. Yes, it's the same thing. They just want to just work the enslaved people. Give them as much work as possible. Go ahead, Bartlett. Bartlett, um, sorry. 
question okay. is it an offensive term to write is an offensive term to write white like is it too offensive to refer to them as whites no because you know like how when whites say the blacks like it's very offensive if we say the whites is it offensive because i don't feel like it's i don't offensive. think if we use blacks it is offensive but if mm -hmm. they use negro it is offensive okay if they use the word Negro, and maybe this is how maybe sometimes you can say something nice. So, for example, you can say the those girls over there is how you say it. It can come across offensive. No, sir. I'll refer to them as the whites. Yes. All right. No problem. So, ladies, our next part. So we know for sure this is where we are starting the abolition of the slave trade. What led to the abolition of the slave trade in the British colonies? Because remember, the French colonies abolished the slave trade at a different time, the Spanish at a different time. The freedom. We're only focusing on the British right now. Right now, we are focusing on the British. And then after that, we are going to focus on the Spanish and the French. All right, so all of this is related to the British because the French had their own experience. And the Spanish also had their own experience. So what we're doing now is that we're going to focus on the abolition of the slave trade. What led to the abolition of the slave trade in British colonies or in Britain in 1803? What were the different movements taking place in Britain that led to the abolition of the slave trade? Now, what was the slave trade? Sir, was it all? Um, can go, can go, can go. What was the slave trade? Britain, you're talking, but we are not hearing you. Anyone? What was the slave trade? Sir. Yes. The slave, Go ahead, trade, Austin. the slave trade was when um the British was the triangular trade, sir, when they um they went to Africa and they took the Africans to bring to the Caribbean as enslaved people. All right. Is it the slave trade, the entire triangle triangular trade, or it's part of the triangular? A trade? part of it, sir, because they also traded goods. All right, what's the, the, another name for the slave trade was called what? The Middle Passage. Sir, the, the, middle pa the, the Middle Passage. The Middle Passage was which route of the triangular trade? Sir, from the Caribbean. From the Caribbean? No, sir, from Africa to the Caribbean. Yes, from Africa to the Caribbean is the Middle Passage. Uh, so that is so that is part of it. Any other comment? What were the conditions like on the slave ship? Horrible, sir. Many of Horrible. them because they couldn't because they were not they were bone. They couldn't oh. excrement, and so they had to do oh. their excrement on themselves to pave the way for. Serial diseases such as dysentery, which took the lives of many other many other enslaves on the ships. Yes, it was horrible. Any other comment on the the conditions on the slave ship? Sir, they also were starved. Well, some of well, yes, yeah, some of them were starved and so died as well. Very yes, that is correct. Anyone else conditions on the slave? Ship. The women, sexual abuse and sexual abuse. Yes, the females were sexually abused. No, we know for sure 
that the conditions of the slave ship were terrible. All right? And so what is going to take place in Britain is that people are not going to be aware of the conditions of the slave ship. And because they are now aware of the conditions of the slave ship, they are going to start to advocate for the abolition of the slave trade. Now, in Britain during this time, in Britain during this time, you had a group of people call themselves humanitarians. And so these were persons who advocate for the improvement in the conditions of human beings. The truth is that when the humanitarians started, it was not, the humanitarians had no, the humanitarians had no, uh, The humanitarians were not originally interested in Africans. It was a, the, the movement started about improving the conditions of whites in Britain and in Europe, improving the conditions of the prisoners. So that's how the movement would have started. And so humanitarians were really interested in about, originally interested in about improving people's condition, white people's condition. Then after a while, some humanitarians started to travel and they went to places in Africa. And they realized that they were misled in believing that Africans were savage, ignorant, dark, and uncivil. They went to Africa to them and they saw- Sir? Yes? Sir, wasn't it like these, um people that told them that the Africans were better people to me. Or that's a different thing. Repeat, repeat for me. Sarah, wasn't it like these two guys, I think, told them that the Africans were better to use because the, the other ones started to die off? Well, that's, that's the, that's the Europeans? Yes. No, the African Is different thing. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. No, one second. Allow her to answer the question. Ask the question. Sir, I don't so, even remember. Sir, she's saying that. Yeah. Weren't the first? They weren't the two men that told them that the Africans were better. To work than the Taino, sir. Remember oh, when? Yes. Remember when the man reported to the crow and Or is that, that a different is... thing? All right. So let I look. So all right. So let I clear that up for you, Miller. The. Look at this. In fifteen twenty, is it twenty. I believe it was fifteen twenty. One second. Let me tell you, sir. Let me tell you. I suppose. So. I'm here, I'm here. One second, please. Can you mute your mic, please? Oh, sorry. No, that's not me.
All right, so ladies, in 1720, in, in the year 1720, two priests would have recommended that Africans, they were Spanish priests, Spanish priests, they recommended that Africans should be used for work, for work, right? That they should be, and they should use them for cheap labor instead of the indigenous people. So that is the, by the, the 17, around 1720, they would have made that recommendation, right? So yes. that is one. Now, the humanitarian movement, one second. All right, so, so that's when they would have made the recommendation. And so from the 1720 to around the 1800, you have Africans who were used as for labor, free labor in the Caribbean. The movement, started around 1750s, the 1750s, the humanitarian movement. There are two separate groups, right? So the priests were not humanitarian. This by the 1750s, you're going to have the humanitarians who are now going to advocate and say that Africans were not, remember, it's not all Europeans are humanitarians. It's a movement. It is a group of people that form themselves in like a club. All right? They were the ones who advocate for the improvement of the conditions of human beings. Remember that Britain and Europe are very large places. So while the Slavery was taking place. Not everybody was aware of slavery. Not everybody would have traveled. So a lot of people don't know about the other places. Only those who were directly involved in the slave trade. You had planters who had plantations in the Caribbean and their children actually have never been to the Caribbean. They don't know what the Caribbean is. They don't know about slavery. They heard of the term slavery, but they don't know what it's like. And so this, in the same way, people would have heard about Africa, just like how you today hear about Africa. You have never been to Africa and you form your own misconception about Africa. But when you go to Africa, you say, wow, I never know that Africa was like this. You see pictures of Africa and say, well, I never know that Africa was so developed in terms of their development, their buildings and their road structures. Yes, sir. sir. Yes, go sir, ahead. In Nigeria, like Lagos and those places, if you yes. look structures they're so big the houses that they live in exceptional like they're really pretty and like the other in Sierra Leone the coast it mm -hmm. looks it 
coast of Sierra Le- Leone looks almost like Jamaica. Like, it's beautiful. Sir, it's a lot of rich people. You know, when you think of Africa, sir, you think of, like, yeah. poor people. I know so it's very rich people with some big brand car and them something there. Sir. You know, Johannesburg, right, sir? Yes. Sir, like, I know someone who stayed in Africa, like, for a year, sir, and they, they went to the mall. And, sir, like, when they sent pictures, I was like, I didn't know Africa had malls like that. It looks very, like, like it wouldn't look like the US to be very honest like the malls are so big and the people drive big cars like BMWs and stuff sir oh. very very good and so ladies you are very correct in the same way the humanitarians right the humanitarians most of them never traveled before and so when they start to travel and go places like Africa, they realize that they were misled. The persons who were involved in the slave trade misled them. The entire country misled them about Africans. And they realize that, no, but the people are not stupid. They are not savage. They are not uncivilized. And so no, people are not going to say, but if I go to Africa, when I go to Africa, I realize that they are human beings just like me and you. Then why are we treating them like that? And so what is going to happen is that they are going to point out that Africans were also human beings and that they should be free. These are white people now who were part of the group that is called the humanitarian group. And they were the ones who said that, listen, improvement should not be only for whites, but it should also include Africans. And by including Africans, we mean that we should recognize them that they are not, that, that they are human beings and they are not properties. And also we should recognize that they should be free people. They should not be enslaved. And so that is how the humanitarians would have started their work. Now, you had this group that is called the Quakers. It's a religious group, a denomination. They were also called the Society of Friends. And they were, they used to imprison people, right? No, not they were, they never used to imprison people. They were imprisoned because they used to include Africans in their church services. So they would have moved. It's a denomination that would have started in Britain. And they went to the Caribbean to spread the gospel and mission trips. And they went to the United States. And so the Quakers, you know what we have, Quaker Oats? Sir, it's so them did actually look. You know the you, yes, you know Quaker Oats. You know Quaker Oats, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> the box. The, you know the you know the box. Well, Quaker Oats started by the Quakers. It's a religious denomination that would have started that. So the founder was name was George Fox. And so he started the denomination in Britain. And then he sent missionaries around the world. So when they went to the Caribbean and, and Europe, they saw enslaved people at first, they used to allow their members of their church to own. They were locked up and they were also, uh, they had to pay fines and all of these different stuff. So the Quakers were joined the humanitarian group because they started to advocate that Africans should be free people and they should also be free to attend their churches. Now, when it comes to the abolition of the slave trade, ladies, 
1878, the Quakers freed their enslaved people in Pennsylvania. You have a question, Austin? No, sorry, it's 18 and 16 on this one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. In 1678, the Quakers freed their enslaved people in Pennsylvania. And by 1695, the Quakers were fined for allowing Africans to attend their churches. And in 1755, the Quakers passed a rule that members of the church could not own Africans as slaves. So they were the first church to say, listen, you cannot own members of this church. If you own Africans as slaves, we are going to put you out of our church. First group. And so they now form part of the humanitarian group. Now a member of their, uh, the humanitarian group expanded because people now start to say that Africans in Europe, not a lot of people, not a lot at the time. It was a small group and then it expanded. So we have, by 1765, we had a person by the name of Granville Sharp. He was a young attorney and he was in London walking on the road and he met an African in London. And his name was Jonathan Strong. He met him on the street. So I said to him, Jonathan, he said to him, why are you on the street? And he said to, the, the Strong said to him, who was an enslaved African, he said to him that my master evicted me. And so Sharp, in other words, what we mean by evict is that he put him out of the house. So I don't know what Strong did, why he would have been evicted, but the master put him out. And he saw he was living on the streets of London. Now, while this was going on, Strong would have lived with Sharp for two years. And while he was there, Strong master returned and said, listen, I have sold him to a Jamaican planter is my slave and I have and I am not dealing with him again. I don't want him to work for me. I'm going to, I, I have sold him to a Jamaican planter. He's going to Jamaica. Sharp took the matter to court and said, no, you put out this enslaved person. For two years he's live, he's living with me. He I found him on the road. He's not my enslaved. I am not enslaving him, but guess what? You can't just come and just want to take him just like that and sell him and ship him off to Jamaica. And so, Sharp brought the matter to court, but the judge refused to give a judgment to rule on it. He refused to make anything on it in terms of a judgment. And so, Sharp has a young attorney said something is not right. He started to read his law books and he discovered, he discovered that in 1749, a slave that actually a law was passed, not a law, a judgment was passed in 1749 that a slave running away in London could not be recovered. So once an enslaved person ran away, you could not claim back that person as your enslaved. That was a judgment that was passed in 1749. Anyway, because no judgment was made when it comes to Jonathan Strong, Sharp really lost the case and Strong was shipped to Jamaica to work on the sugar plantation. Then, by 1770, ladies, Sharp advocated for another enslaved person by the name of Thomas Lewis. His master could not prove ownership. So when Sharp brought the matter to court, 
the person who said, all right, Thomas is my enslaved, he could not show any document to say Thomas was his enslaved. So this court freed Thomas. In 1772, Sharp again met another person, enslaved African, by the names of, name of James Somerset. And Somerset was also evicted by his master and he was sold. Now, Somerset, Somerset ladies, uh, the Somerset case is also called the Manifield Just Judgment. So the judge, his name was Lord Manifield, and so he was fearful to make a judgment on it. Sharp was saying that in Britain, there is no law in Britain to say that slavery, there was no law in Britain that recognized a group of people called slave that only applies to the Caribbean. All right? So that was sharp argument. So when the judge went and he did his research, he realized that sharp was correct. There is no slave law in Britain. Slave law only applied to the Caribbean. In fact, in British colonies, each colony made their own law. There was no law in Britain that said that slavery should exist. There was none of that. So Somerset, case continues. Uh, Lord Manisfield, very fearful, very fearful. So what he did was that he went to Parliament and he said, Parliament, declare a law, make a law that said that slavery was legal in England. So all along in England, they had enslaved Africans, but there was no law to govern enslaved Africans. Only in the Caribbean that you had laws that were made to govern enslaved Africans. And so the parliament refused. And when the parliament refused, Sharp was very strong that Somerset is not going to the Caribbean is not going to, to be sold. So what he did was that the judge made a rule that said that slavery was illegal in Britain. So this case in 1772, the Manisfield judgment was very, very important. Everybody was watching this case. Everyone was interested in it because everyone who actually owned Africans as slaves in Britain had to know free their enslaved people in Britain because no law in Britain recognized the category of slave. All right? Only in the Caribbean that was applied. And so it would have continued after that judgment happened. The Quakers formed a group and the Quakers said, listen, we're not, if we are humanitarians and we are religious people, we need to get rid of slavery. We made one major step in getting rid of slavery in Britain. We need to get rid of slavery in the Caribbean. But you can't just jump and get rid of slavery in the Caribbean. We need to get rid of slavery. We need to get rid of the slave trade first. This is our first step that we need to do. Get rid of the slave trade. Let us try and get the, the slave trade to be abolished. After we get rid of the slave trade, then we are going to try and get rid of slavery. So that was their approach. So the Quakers, they formed a group that is called the Committee for the Abolition of the Slave Trade. So that was a group that they formed. This group was made up of people from various denominations. Some persons who were not even religious were part of these groups. 
and they nicknamed them the saints. So people mocked them and said, look at them, the saints talking about Africans should be free and getting rid of the slave trade. These people are stupid. So they call them the saints or the Clapham sect. All right. So members of this group included persons like Granville Sharp. And so we have seen how Granville Sharp would have had three cases that he brought to the court in London. Uh, Williams Wilberford, who was a politician. John Newton, anybody know John Newton? I've heard of John Newton before. Hmm. There is that the man from Pocahontas? I'm, <laughs> I'm not familiar with that. So is Isaac Newton, brother. Yeah, no, no, that's John Smith. Oh, <laughs> sorry. So John Newton is the person who wrote the hymn, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Word, That Save a Wretch Like Me. So John Newton, when he wrote that song, he discovered that, listen, he was a, somebody who worked on the slave ship. He was involved in the slave ship. He owned plantation in Jamaica, enslaved, enslaved people. And somehow God spoke to him and he discovered that he was a wretch because all the evil that he did to the Africans, it was so wrong. So he was convicted. So he joined the movement to try and free the enslaved people. And so all of these persons here join the movement. Wilberforce was a, was a politician. So what they did know was that they went and they started to study about the slave trade. They started to study about the slave trade and they started to write books about the slave trade. So for example, Thomas Clarkson was one person. He wrote a book that is called A Some Review of the Slave Trade. John Newton wrote also about his experience uh, when it comes to the African slave trade. They got an enslaved person, former enslaved person, Equiano, who escaped from the Caribbean and went to London, lived in London. He, uh, they allowed him to publish his book. And he wrote about all his experiences as an enslaved person. And they presented these materials to the British public and parliament. Now, people now start to say, wow, I didn't know that the slave trade was that horrible. We didn't know that all of these experience, uh, people would have experienced all of these things. Because guess what? Newton was involved in the slave trade. Equiano was an enslaved person. He would have been somebody who they captured from Africa. Bring him to the Caribbean. He went to the US, back to the Caribbean. Then he reached to London. He had personal experience. So when they start to bring persons like Equiano to church to talk about the slave trade, Newton started to talk about it. Clarkson went on the slave ship and he took pictures. Then people start to be aware of it and people said, no, but how are we? Are oh, we said that we are Christians and we are allowing this to happen. Right? And so what is going to take place, ladies, in 1790, they are going to bring a bill to parliament to abolish the slave trade, but it failed. Again, they did it in 1792, it failed. But by 1807, the British people was well on it. And the movement uh, uh, expanded. A lot of people knew about the, the slave trade and the experiences. And they said, listen, we must abolish the slave trade. This is not good. And so in December 1807, a law was passed to say that the slave trade should be abolished. Now, ladies, there are some arguments that were presented to abolish the slave trade. Clarkson, Wilberforce, all of these persons said, listen, you need to abolish the slave trade because Britain make less money from the slave trade. 
If you trade manufactured goods, you would make more money. So let's abolish the slave trade for economic reasons. They also said that a lot of the seamen who were involved in the slave trade, they died. We can't allow them to, to continue to die because we are losing workers. Use those persons to transport goods, manufactured goods. And by this time, ladies, Britain found a new colony, India. And they said, look how India is big and have how many people. Manufactured goods, send the goods to India so we can make a lot of money. And so what is taking place, the humanitarian are going to parliament, they are campaigning, they're forming slave, slave trade abolitionist groups, meeting in groups, they go to church, they start to publish books, pamphlets, give out all of these papers and pictures on the slave trade, and so they are gaining support. And so ladies, by 1807, the slave trade was abolished. Any comment? Any comment, ladies? No, sir. All right, so what I'm going to ask you to do, I already posted the PowerPoint in the group, Google Classroom, go on to Google Classroom and ensure that you read, go back through the PowerPoint, read it, your textbooks, read your textbook, because this is a very quick one we're doing when it comes to this theme. We have to finish this theme by the end of November. All right, ladies, enjoy the rest of the day. Meet you on Monday. Monday. Very good. Bye, ladies. Sir, Go ahead. Mr. Hall. Go ahead. I forgot to tell you, Carol, Carol wasn't here today because she went on a GA trip. Oh, and Jelani too, sir. All right. Yeah. Thank you for informing me. Yes, sir.